Hi, I'm Brian Stump, software engineer at IBM Urban Code. Today I'm going to tell you about our integration with Salesforce. Salesforce is used by many of our customers around the globe to develop and deliver applications to the main Salesforce platform. Changes are made on a regular basis to these applications to keep them up to date and improve them. And in order to get the most out of Salesforce, it's important to ensure that our migration process across different environments is as efficient as possible. To do this, IBM provides a fully supported plugin for integrating Urban Code Deploy with Salesforce. The plugin incorporates the Force.com migration tool, which is a utility for moving Salesforce metadata between a local repository and a Salesforce organization. This tool is designed to help make the retrieval and deployment of artifacts from test and production environments faster and simpler by providing a parameter-driven Java AMP-based utility. When we combine this with the benefits of Urban Code Deploy, we can now version our metadata changes as deployable artifacts, providing better traceability, visibility, and repeatability through the use of our graphical process editor and version inventory. Through the use of the plugin, we can deploy and retrieve artifacts from our sandbox environments, test organizations, and production organizations easily and quickly. Let's take you through an example in the UI. Here we have a Salesforce application in Urban Code Deploy which is mapped to two environments representing Salesforce organizations. Under our Components tab, we have one component, which is the Salesforce code that we're going to be deploying. If I drill into the version, I can see the artifacts, which contain classes and triggers. These are just sample code files, which we'll be sending to our Salesforce platform. Going back to our Salesforce component, I can see that I have a process for deploying the package. Within this process is a download artifact step, which will download the files from the version, and a deploy step, which is directly from our Salesforce plugin. Within the deploy step, we have the deploy route, which is the location we'll be pulling the files from. In this case, I've marked it with a period to represent the working directory, but it could also represent anywhere on the agent machine which contains the files. The Salesforce server URL represents the URL of Salesforce. The jar path is the path to our ant Salesforce jar, Rollback on air is very self-explanatory. Check only. We can check this option if we want to only run the tests associated with our deployment, but not the actual deployment. For now, I'm going to leave it unchecked since we're running a full deployment to Salesforce. A username and password to log into the Salesforce platform. The test level, which represents what tests we want to run at deployment time. In this case, I've selected run specified tests and below, for the test name, specified exactly which four tests I'll be running, which are located on my Salesforce organization. All right, from here, I'm going to go back to the Salesforce application. Now I'm going to run a deployment to this Org1 application. I'm going to select my Salesforce deploy process, as well as the latest version, which I have loaded into CodeStation. Before I select Submit, Let's take a look at my Salesforce platform. Notice I do not have any recent items. And if I go down to the Build and Develop window, I can see several Apex classes which were preloaded, as well as no Apex triggers. Going back to Urban Code Deploy, I can hit Submit. Here we can see the process execution running with the steps that I showed you earlier. Now that we see we have a successful deployment, we can check the output log and see that it succeeded. Going over to our Salesforce platform, I can refresh the page and see that three recent items were now added, the sample account trigger, the sample failing test class, and sample deploy class. If we go down to develop and click on Apex classes, we can also see these located here and drill in and see the code. We can also check the Apex triggers and see the trigger. Going down even further, we can check the deployment status. You can see that I have many test deployments which were run, but this latest one being the most recent. We can view details and see that the four tests I specified were run as well as the three components were run and succeeded. Thank you for watching.